Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, in the last video we just learned about the qualitative properties of harmonic functions, solutions to Laplace's equation. Now, if you think back to what we've been doing to get all the way up to those qualitative properties, we've been doing a lot of separation of variables. And one thing you see over and over with separation of variables is series solutions that involve sines and cosines. Now, you might already be familiar with these series, and you might know them by their proper name, Fourier series. What I would like to do in this lecture, and the next few that follow it, is discuss the mathematical properties of Fourier series. And the reason for this is because we've been kind of using them over and over again without ever actually talking about the mathematics behind them. I did all of these separation of variables uh, explanations and derivations but really sort of skirted around, you know, what it means to have an infinite series solution. We always just said, well, I can write it like this, let's leave it alone. So what I'd like to do first in this video is talk about when it, the Fourier series actually converges and what it converges to. Okay, so I just want to start by reminding you, I kept writing this. So I was writing equals and I had a naught plus the sum and greater than or equal to one, and cos of n, uh, sorry, n pi over l, n pi x over l, plus the sum, and greater than or equal to one, bn sine of n pi x over l. Okay? So this is what we would like to work with. We figured out how to to find all the coefficients. But again, you have to be very careful with infinite series of functions, right? You learn Taylor series, you, I, I imagine you talk about radius of convergence whenever you learn these things. I have some lectures myself on them. Saying equals here is a little bit finicky, right? It's only equal whenever the right-hand side converges and it converges to the value of f of x, okay? So the question is, when does this converge? Well. We're gonna to have to first start with a class of functions, okay? And in my case, I'm going to use what are called piecewise smooth functions. So here, my function f is piecewise smooth, okay? I'll, I'm going to continually talk about piecewise smooth functions on an interval, on an interval, if the interval the interval can be broken up, can be broken up into subintervals or into pieces if you want. Pardon me. Such that f and f prime, so its derivative, are continuous, continuous on each piece, okay? So, essentially let's take a, take a look at an example here. X, here's my example. Maybe nice smooth function. Nice smooth function. Nice smooth function. So what you can see here is that this domain of x is broken up into three components. On each one of these subcomponents, I have a smooth function, but I have these jump discontinuities. Okay. Essentially, what a piecewise smooth function is is it's a function that can only have jump discontinuities. Okay. That's what we're going to be looking at. So this one's good. Let me show you one that's not. Now you probably know this function. Here it is. f of x is equal to the cubed root of x. Right? So even though it looks nice and continuous, its derivative, right, f prime of x is equal to one third x to the minus two thirds. Its derivative is not continuous at x equal to zero. Okay? So, in this case, this thing is not a piecewise smooth function. 
Now, let's look at something else here, right? When I gave you this Fourier or this, this expansion, the function f was on minus l to l or 0 to l, whatever it happened to me. It was on a finite interval. These things exist everywhere and they're periodic, right? So what we're going to actually do is this series might converge outside of this sort of domain of x or of f, right? f is going to be assumed to be given on an interval. This thing exists everywhere, so we're going to consider what's called a periodic extension of a function. And this is probably exactly what you think it is. So if we are given f of x on minus l to l, we just repeat it over and over all of the real numbers. Okay, so basically if I give you the function between minus L and L, just copy and paste it and repeat it backwards and forward over the entire real numbers. So let me give you an example, okay? Just take uh, whatever function you want. I'm going to take uh, here's L, here's minus L, here's my function, right? So I gave you this function between minus L and L. My periodic extension, just repeat it. You repeat it backwards and forward as much as you want, right? So I'll have another piece here and another piece here and so on and so forth. It just keeps going forever and ever. You're artificially, you're taking something given inside of a small interval and making it periodic. Now, take a look at this though. Periodicity, by forcing that periodicity, you might be forcing a discontinuity into the function, right? This is why we have to think about piecewise smooth functions. So if I gave you something that was perfectly continuous, perfectly smooth inside the interval minus L to L, if it doesn't meet those boundary conditions that make it periodic, then the periodic extension of this thing is forcing it to be a piecewise smooth function, not a just regular smooth function. Okay, so this is what I want you to think about while we're going through this. Now, here's the theorem. This is the Fourier convergence theorem. So if f of x is piecewise smooth, right? So here's my, my class of functions. It's piecewise smooth on minus L to L. Then the Fourier series, this thing, then the Fourier series converges, all right, Fourier series of f of x, sorry converges, and I guess I should clarify what I mean here. By, by the Fourier series of f of x, I mean that these coefficients are determined by those integrals that I've shown you before, right? This will converge to 1, converges to the periodic extension, so the periodic extension of f of x, uh, at points, at points um, x where f is continuous, okay, so anywhere that f is continuous between minus l to l, you're going to get convergence of the Fourier series. Again, this is a Fourier series, this is a series of functions, so you have to talk about at which points you get convergence. So as long as you have a point where f is continuous, you get convergence. And then the periodic extension just tells you that if you move outside L to L, well, then you'll still get convergence as well because of the periodicity here. But what happens at points where you have discontinuities? In this case, you are going to converge to the average, okay, the average of the two limits, the two limits. Uh, here, let me define this. I'm going to have one half, and here I have f of x plus, uh, sorry, plus f of x minus. 
This just means approaching the point X from the right, approaching the point X from the left, right? Your sort of old calculus notation maybe, where the periodic extension, the periodic extension has a jump discontinuity. Okay, so let's take a look at this right here. Any points on the nice smooth curve, well, I'm going to converge to those points. But here I have a jump discontinuity, so I am going to converge to their average with the Fourier series, somewhere right in the middle. Similarly here, I'll converge to the average, right? So this is the Fourier convergence theorem, okay? So there's a few fine points here, piecewise smooth. Remember, we, we defined piecewise smooth in some sense to handle the periodic extension, but it actually opens up the wider class of functions that we can look at. Anywhere where we, we have continuity, convergence, check, no problem. But if we have a discontinuity, the only kind of discontinuity that's allowed by piecewise smooth functions is jump discontinuities, and that means that you get the average at the jump, essentially. So let's, uh, what does this actually tell you? Well, so this means that for all x between uh, minus l to l, I'll, I'll leave the endpoints open because I don't want to talk about, I, I mean, this already covers the case of the, the jumps at the ends. But here's what I have. Well, I get that I get f of x from the right plus f of x from the left over 2 is equal to my Fourier series. Okay, so here's n greater than or equal to 1, a n cos n pi x over l plus the sum n greater than or equal to 1, b n sine n pi x over l. I think I ran over there, but essentially I'm just writing this. But here's the point. This is what the Fourier series actually converges to. Okay, so it, it converges to the average at every single point. But when you're continuous, these two things are the same. And so this will just reduce to f of x, okay? But this is a more, this is a, a proper way of saying what the Fourier series converges to, okay? So if you're, if you're considering just continuous functions that are periodic, uh, then you have no problems. But this allows you to look at things that are much more general, of course, okay? So let's look at, you know, just a really kind of simple example. Let's consider f of x, and here's my function. It's going to be uh, just sort of like a heaviside step almost, just a little bit more complicated. x is l over 2, and it's going to be 1 when x is bigger than l over 2. Let's just plot this thing. It's nothing too exciting looking. It's essentially this. Uh, here's l over 2, and here's my function, and then I get a step up to l say L, and here's minus L, okay? So, let's just, you know, you can actually compute what the Fourier series is if you want. You can find all these coefficients. It's a pretty easy, you know, uh, uh, integration, or you can just throw it in a Wolfram if you want. But what I really want to point out is what the Fourier series converges to, okay? So the Fourier series, well, this thing is going to be equal to what? At the left endpoint, remember there's a periodic extension here. So now you have another jump discontinuity. So it's going to converge to 1 half when x is equal to minus l, right? So you're all the way up at 1 here. So the average of 1 and 0, that's 1 half. It's going to converge to 0 if you're between minus l and l over 2. All the way here because you're continuous. Then you're going to converge to 1 half when x is equal to L over 2. Again, the average of this jump. And then you'll converge to 1 when uh, you're between L over 2 and uh, L. And then the last piece of this, sorry, is 1 half whenever x is equal to L, right? And that's the same as the, the left endpoint, right? Because this thing is periodic now. 
but that's essentially what you're going to see, right? So you're not actually converging to the exact function because of these sort of averages that you would be taking out of this thing. So I want you to see um, the complexity of this, right? I, I swept a lot of the details under the rug early on because I just wanted you to, to see the general process. But now that we're in a place where we can start talking about the math, now we have to take these considerations in, okay? So best case scenario, smooth function that is actually periodic. Then you get a beautiful Fourier series. If it's not periodic, then you're gonna introduce some sort of jumps just like we did right here, okay? In the next video, we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at just the cosine series and just the sine series. These were the things that we saw coming up with Neumann and Dirichlet boundary conditions. So they're sort of reduced versions of these Fourier series. And we're gonna get similar convergence theorems. So I'll see you all in the next video, everybody.